All right, in this chapter, we're going to look at trigonometric identities. Um, <clears throat> an identity is an equation that's always true. Um, for example, 2x minus 3 is equal to the negative of 3x, uh, sorry, 3 minus 2x. That's true no matter what value x takes on. Um, we're going to look at identities that involve trigonometric functions. So um, we're going to start with some basic identities that just come from kind of the definitions, what we've known for a while since back in the first semester. Um, for example, cosecant is equal to 1 over sine. That's how it's defined, that uh, sine and cosecant are reciprocals of each other. That's what this pair of um, equations says. Um, the, the next pair down, this pair, is, says the same thing about cosine and secant. They are reciprocals of each other. Um, now, uh, for tan and cotan, tan and cotan are reciprocals of each other. That's what this pair says. But also, we can define them in terms of uh, sines and cosine. Tangent is defined to be sine over cosine. Cotan is defined to be cosine over sine. Again, these aren't new facts. Um, we're just sort of revisiting them, but we've seen them as early as the first semester. Um, when we were looking at trigonom uh, trigonometry back then. Um, the next set of identities, which are ones that I think we also derived um, and talked about in the last section or in the last semester, um, are the Pythagorean identities. So the there are three Pythagorean identities. I memorize one of them. And I think, you know, I think it's good to memorize. If we were still taking this course um, kind of as our face-to-face -face class, I would say you need to memorize these and they won't be provided. When you take your test on this unit, you'll be able to make a, a sheet of notes. So you could choose to include these identities or not. Um, but these Pythagorean identities, this is the fundamental, like the first Pythagorean identity. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. That's true no matter what the angle theta is. And we're going to derive that on the next page. Um, uh, and then if you just do some algebra on this equation, that's how you arrive at these two. So that's why I say just memorize this first one, um, and then I can always arrive at the one, uh, at either of these other two by just doing the appropriate algebraic steps, and we'll talk about that as well. So here's the unit circle. Um, remember that uh, for a given angle theta, I drew a theta so that it's in the first quadrant, but this is true regardless um, of what quadrant uh, the angle is in. It's a unit circle, so it's radius 1, so we have the coordinates of these points. And then cosine theta and sine theta are just defined to be the uh, coordinates of the point uh, where the terminal side of the angle intersects with the circle. Um, so the first thing we're going to do so one of our favorite things to do in a uh, in a plane is drop down a perpendicular. Now we have a nice right triangle. And um, so if we look at the legs of this triangle, this length along the bottom, that has to be the same as cosine theta. It has to be the same as that x-coordinate. And this length has to be the same as the y-coordinate, so that is sine theta. Moreover, this is a unit circle. It is a circle of radius 1, and that means we know that the radius is equal to 1, uh, the, so this hypotenuse is equal to 1. Now, let's use this right triangle. Pythagoras tells us that cosine theta squared plus sine theta squared is equal to 1 squared. Um, when we're squaring trig functions, it's conventional to put the square kind of on the function itself, kind of between, in this case, the cos and the theta. So this would be cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1 squared. The reason that we write the exponent there and not after the angle is because we want to make sure it's understood that we're squaring the whole function and not just squaring the angle itself. Um, if you like, you certainly can use the parentheses around the function and squaring it like we did in the line above, um, but you'll almost always, almost exclusively see it written in the way that we've written it here. So there's the Pythagorean identity. That one for me is easy to remember because I just think of the unit circle, right? Um, and and it's a, we've got a, a, a right triangle that, of hypotenuse 1. 
Now, uh, to um, I derive the other two, we're just going to do some algebra on this one. So I'm starting with the function, or with the equation, cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1. If I want the version that involves tangents and secants, what I'm going to do is divide both sides of this equation by cosine squared theta. Now on the left side, I'm going to split up the um, fraction over the addition that's happening up top. So I've got cosine squared theta over cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta over cosine squared theta equals uh, 1 over cosine squared theta. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little bit more rewriting. Now the cosine squared over cosine squared is clearly 1. Sine squared over cosine squared, um, that's the same as sine theta over cosine theta squared, right? Because we know that we can distribute an exponent over division, right? So I'm just sort of undoing that process. And then 1 over cosine squared, that's the same as 1 over cosine theta squared, right? Because 1 squared is 1. One more step now. 1 plus sine over cosine is tangent. So I've got tan squared theta. And 1 over cosine is secant, so this is secant squared theta. So there is that version. Here I included some extra steps just to sort of see how we um, arrive at the tangent function and the secant function. Um, the next one maybe won't take quite uh, so as, as many steps to, um, to figure out, but I'm going to start with cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1. There's the fundamental Pythagorean identity. This time, if I want the identity that involves cotangent cosecants, I'm going to divide through by sine squared. Um, so dividing both sides by sine squared means I'm just going to divide each term by sine squared theta. And cosine squared over sine squared is the square of cosine over sine. So that is the square of cotan theta. Sine squared over sine squared is 1. And 1 over sine squared is the square of 1 over sine. So this is cosecant squared theta. And there's the other version. So we have these basic identities. Um, we're going to look at, you know, learn more identities as we progress through the chapter. But uh, what I want to do now is really spend some time on kind of the bulk of our work in this chapter. Um, and the bulk of our work in this chapter is going to be um, where we're kind of going to take what we already know, um, you, you know, using the identities that we have and using them to prove another identity, to prove that something else is true. So um, one strategy that I try to employ is I, you know, often there's one side that looks busier than the other. So I usually start with the busy side, the business side. There's more going on. I've got more options available to me. And then I use algebra and these other trig identities to see if I can't turn it into the other side. What's really important is when I start this example, right, so I'm going to start with the business side. That's on the left. So cosine x times cosecant x over cotan squared x. All right. Now, I am very deliberately not going to say this equals tangent. I'm not trying to treat this as an equation like I'm going to solve it. I don't have an equation where I'm going to do the same thing on both sides. What I have is an expression. And I'm going to use algebra and other identities to rewrite this expression. And hopefully, eventually, I'll be able to say this is equal to um, tan x at the end. So let's begin. I'm going to do two things to start. I've got this cosine x, so I'm going to just bring that over. But I'm going to rewrite this cosecant x as 1 over sine. I'm going to re rewrite the cotan x as 1 over tan squared. Or, the, sorry, the cotan squared is 1 over tan squared. Now, I've got this cosine times 1 over sine um, on top. I'm going to bring this over and write this as cosine over sine as a fraction. 
Now, I want to divide this by 1 over tan squared, but what I'm going to do is say, okay, if I'm dividing by a fraction, that is the same as multiplying by the re reciprocal. So I'm going to flip that and say that this is times tan squared. The, uh, tan squared, whoops, I wrote theta here, so I mean tan squared x over 1. Now there's more than one way we could go through this. So from here, um, I'll show you one way and then we'll kind of go back and, and look at the other way we could have gone through this. But cosine over sine, um, that's one of our basic definitions. Cosine over sine is cotangent. So I have cotan x times tan squared x. And cotan is equal to 1 over tangent. So now I have 1 over tan x times tan squared x. And now we'll just use uh, rules of exponents. This tangent cancels with this factor of tangent. We're just using algebra, and we get tan x. And that is what we wanted, right? So we can declare victory. Huzzah. So notice what I did here is I started with the expression on one side, right? This was where I started. In each step, I just used an identity or some algebra to rewrite it, and I eventually got to tan x, which was the expression on the other side. I maintained equality throughout, and I got to tan x. And that means that the equation that I started with, or not the equation, the expression that I started with and the expression that I ended with must be equal. Now I said that there was a couple ways we could have gone about this. Um, if I start here, right, let's take where we are here, and I'm going to just, instead of taking that cosine over sine and writing it as cotan, um, let's say instead of going that route, I'm going to take the tan squared and write it in terms of cosines and sines. So I have cosine x over sine x. Now tan squared is tangent is sine over cosine squared. So I have sine squared x over cosine squared x. Now I can do some canceling. This sine cancels with one of those factors of sine. This cosine cancels with one of those factors of cosine. And we get sine x over cosine x, which we know is equal to tan x. So there's, there's often, you know, maybe more than one correct path um, to get uh, to where you're going. But the nice thing about these, you know, some people find these writing, you know, proving an identity uh, to be frustrating, but the nice thing about it is at least I know what I want to get. Like they're telling me at the end I should be able to get tangent. It's like somebody saying, here's what the answer is ahead of time, you know, try to get there. Okay, so let's do another one. We're going to prove that sine cubed theta is equal to sine theta minus sine theta times cosine squared theta. Now, I want to start, you know, I can pick either side of this equation to start on. And it looks to me like there's more going on on the right side. So I'm going to start with the right side. So sine theta minus sine theta times cosine squared theta. I'm going to start by using some algebra. Look, both of these terms, you know, I'm subtracting a couple of things. They both have a factor of sine theta. So I am going to factor that out. And I factor out the sine theta, and what's left is 1 minus cosine squared theta. Now in this section, you know, we don't have a ton of identities. We have those basic definitions about like what's the reciprocal of what, and we have the Pythagorean identities. And whenever I see um, a, a function squared, I know it's possible to, to work Pythagoras in somehow. So I'm going to do a little side work here and just remind myself that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. Now, on the one hand, if I see sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta, I can replace it with 1. But um, also, if I have, if I take this equation, 
let's say I subtract cosine squared theta from both sides. Then we arrive at the equation sine squared theta is 1 minus cosine squared theta. And I can now make that substitution. So 1 minus cosine squared theta here is the same as sine, uh, sorry, sine squared theta. I left off this square. So I can replace that factor of 1 minus cosine squared theta with a factor of sine squared theta. And now sine theta times sine squared theta is sine cubed theta. And we can declare victory. Okay, let's do another one. Um, we're going to prove that secant squared y over cotan y minus tan cubed y is all equal to tan of y. Um, now, uh, if we want to start with the business side, start with, with uh, the side where we kind of have the most options of what we can do, I think it's pretty clear we should start with the left-hand side. So uh, secant squared y over cotan y minus tan cubed y equals, now I know eventually I'm supposed to get um, tangent of y. Um, there's more than one way we can go about this type of problem, um, and sometimes the hardest thing is just getting started. So I want you to, when you think about this, just think about doing something that you, that you know you're allowed to do. Don't worry about if it gets you to the answer yet or not. I want us to get comfortable just trying something if it doesn't work, the worst thing that we, the worst possible outcome is that we just try again. So um, the first thing I'm going to do here is say, oh, look, I've got, I'm dividing by cotan. A cotan in the bottom is the same as I could bring that up and it becomes a factor of tangent on top because they are reciprocals of each other. So I'm going to rewrite this as tan y times secant squared y minus tan cubed y. Now look at this, kind of similar to the last one. I have a, a tan of y appearing in both these terms. I'm going to factor it out. So then inside I have secant squared y minus tan squared y. Now look, we have, I see this, um, um, I've got this expression that involves squares of, of trig functions. Um, maybe doesn't quite look like Pythagoras yet, but I think that it could. Now there's more than one way to go about this. Um, I'm going to show you uh, one way to do this is to just convert the secant squared tan squared in terms of, you know, write them both in terms of sines and cosines. So this would be 1 over cosine squared minus sine squared y over cosine squared y. And look, we're subtracting fractions. We already have a common denominator. So then I have 1 minus sine squared y. And 1 minus sine squared, um, maybe this is a little bit familiar, but you know, Pythagoras says that uh, sine squared y plus cosine squared y is equal to 1. So if I subtract sine squared from both sides, we get that cosine squared y is equal to 1 minus sine squared y. So we can make that substitution right here. So we have cosine squared y over cosine squared y, which is, of course, those cancel each other out. That's now just multiplied by 1, and we get tan y and we can declare victory. Um, up here, I'll just, here's a little aside, right? So we finished this problem, but, you know, as I've mentioned, you know, two or three hundred times already, there's often more than one way to go about it. So let's say I got to this point and I said, hmm, um, you know, I've got these squares of trig functions and I know that that might often involve Pythagoras. So, 
if I get the version of Pythagoras um, that involves secants and tangents, um, which we get by dividing through by cosine squared. Uh, this looks like tan squared y plus 1 equals secant squared y. And then if we just subtract tan squared y from both sides, we can see that 1 is equal to secant squared y minus tan squared y. So we could have done that side work for Pythagoras and then just said, oh, the highlighted piece up there is 1 and then gotten done to tan y in that way. All right, let's try another one. Uh, we're going to prove that 1 minus sine x divided by sine x cotan x is equal to cosine x divided by 1 plus sine x. All right. Um, I don't know if uh, I don't know if one side is necessarily easier than the other. I'm just going to go ahead and pick the left side to start with. Now we've got this fraction, right? Um, and we know what we're looking for, right? We know that we want to get to um, eventually cosine x over 1 plus sine x. But there's not a lot of algebra, like, you know, at, at least what I'm saying, I guess what I'm trying to say here is we can't cancel anything, right? And we can't necessarily factor anything out. Um, but this is a good example to show one option that we have available to us. That's not always what we want to do, but, you know, it happens often enough that I keep it in mind, and that is to multiply the top and the bottom of this fraction by the conjugate of the top. Now, we're already familiar with that as a general, um, as a general technique. For example, you know, if I were working with this complex number, one divided, uh, sorry, two divided by one minus three j, we already know like, that we have a technique that says, oh, it could be helpful to multiply by the complex conjugate, right? That's what we get when we just change the sign of the imaginary part. But the conjugate in general is something that um, uh, that we get when we just take an expression and, and that involves an addition or a subtraction and then just change that operation. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom of this fraction by 1 plus sine x. Now, if we, if we do the multiplication on top, 1 minus sine x, 1 plus sine x, we've got 1 minus sine x plus sine x, and then minus sine squared x. So the plus sine x and the minus sine x, those cancel, and we get on top 1 minus sine squared x. On the bottom, we have sine x uh, cotan x times 1 plus sine x. Now on top, let's focus on what's on top. 1 minus sine squared x. We've already seen this once or twice today. 1 minus sine squared x is cosine squared x. That is by Pythagoras. Now, on the bottom, I'm going to take that cotan and write it as cosine over sine. So we have sine x times cosine x over sine x, and then times 1 plus sine x. We could do some canceling here. Sine cancels with that sine. Now we have cosine squared x on top divided by cosine x times 1 plus sine x. And we could do some more canceling. This factor of cosine cancels with a factor of cosine on top. And we are left with cosine x divided by 1 plus sine x, as desired. There's a more uh, muted way of declaring victory, I guess. <laughs>
All right, we're going to do one more example, and this one's a slightly different type of problem um, where they say, they, they don't tell us to prove that one thing is equal to another, they just say simplify. And in some ways, this is a little bit more difficult because it's sort of like they want us to prove something, but they're just not telling us what the end result is. But one thing to keep in mind is that the simplified expression that you're looking for is usually written with just one trig function. So that's our goal is to see, you know, here I have three trig functions, right? Cosecant, tangent, and cotan. I want to see if I can get it to a point where I need just one trig function to express this. So, all right, um, I'm going to start by writing this cotan. I'm going to start with my focus on that. And in my next step, I'm going to write cotan as 1 over tangent. So everything else I'm going to keep the same. On the bottom I have tan x plus 1 over tan x. Now this tan x that we have, that's tan x over 1. And I can see that I'm really adding fractions on the bottom. So um, I kind of have, I guess, um, I've got uh, like a compound fractions or a complex fraction, right? I've got fractions within fractions, which, you know, that's not simplified. Um, so what I'm going to do is look at the common denominator, you know, figure out what's the LCD of all these fractions that I see. Um, and it's just tan x, right? In fact, there's only one fraction inside this fraction. So there's my LCD is tan x. And so what I'm going to do is multiply the top and the bottom of the big fraction by tan x. That's not the only way you could proceed. You could say, look at the bottom, I'm going to actually just get a common denominator and add those fractions first. Kind of like we have two techniques when we were just working with complex fractions in the first place back in chapter something, chapter six maybe? I can't remember. Oh, probably actually the first chapter when we, when we uh, were doing um, al factoring and algebraic fractions. So, okay, when we do this, on top we have tan x. Uh, times, oh sorry, we have cosecant times tan. I guess it doesn't matter what order we write that product in. On the bottom, we're going to distribute this factor of tangent. So tangent times tangent is tan squared x. Tangent times 1 over tan is uh, 1. So I have tan squared plus 1. Now, if you look at that expression on the bottom and you say, oh man, I've got this expression that involves the square of a, of a, of a trig function, uh, maybe by this point your brain is already going to Pythagoras to see what we can do with this. So I always start with the basic fundamental one because that's the one I remember. Sine squared plus cosine squared x equals 1. Divide through, if I want the version that involves tangent, I'm going to divide through by cosine squared x. And we get tan squared x plus 1 equals secant squared x. So we can substitute tan squared plus 1, which we have. We can replace that with uh, secant squared x. Now, um, we still have three trig functions. You might be looking at this and saying, yeah, nice job. We still have three different trig functions. But I'll tell you what we don't have is anything that involves addition and subtraction. We've, everything's written now in terms of multiplication and division, and that is actually a better place to be. So um, there's more than one way to proceed, but I'm going to decide, you know, I'm just going to write everything in terms of sines and cosines. Cosecant is 1 over sine x. Tangent is sine x over cosine x. And on the bottom we have secant squared, so that's 1 over cosine squared x. Okay, now on top we have this 1 over sine times sine over cosine, so I'm going to cancel the, the, the sines right off. So on top I, I, what I have left is 1 over cosine. And then I'm going to take this, we're dividing it by 1 over cosine squared, so I'm going to flip that and say we're going to multiply by the reciprocal times cosine squared x over 1. And now we can do just a teensy bit more algebra.
cancel this cosine with one of those factors of cosine and we just left with cosine x. Now there is a, a simplified expression involving just one trig function. And what we've done is we've just shown that no matter what angle you use, if I plug a given angle into this expression, into that fraction, right, and compute what it gives me, it's going to always give me the same thing as if I just plugged that angle into the cosine in the first place. Um, make sure you do as much practice as you can possibly squeeze in on this section. Um, in this chapter in general, um, it's something that does get easier the more you do. There's sort of a rhythm um, and a pattern that you start to recognize after you do a bunch of these. Um, if you have any questions at all, I hope that you'll reach out, send me a message on Canvas or an email um, or post to the discussion forum or come to office hours.